As many of you will be aware, there are several Lucian Freud exhibitions on around the world. To mark the 100th anniversary of his birth, which was a couple of days ago, his birth in Berlin, um, and also the 10th anniversary of his death. So without um, saying any more, I'm going to let Dimitri and Sophie do all the talking today. I might interject the odd question, but I'm going to hand over to Dimitri, who's going to start the conversation off. And, um, and yeah, we'd really look forward to it. Thank you both so much. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Nicola. And I guess, Sophie, um, was just framing the discussion today, uh, it, in many ways, relating Freud's work to old, old masters and classical art is a way to better understand his uh, journey as an artist and the output mm -hmm. as one of the most prolific and influential painters, at the very least in Britain, Europe and internationally of the 20th century. Uh, how do we how we are to think about the progression and where do we start thinking about the um about his roots in looking at art and then relating perhaps his own work mm. to art of the past it remaining a distinct contemporary painter of the time well if we begin um in the beginning and the, the first decade of his life was entirely in germany uh to a very sophisticated very cultured family um, he's named even after Lou Andre Salome, who was a friend of his grandparents, who was great muse for Nietzsche, etc. Um, so he would have been brought up aware of culture, and um, his first ten years of his life were entirely in in Germany. When you're really formed, I think, and so the earliest things are are very influenced by Northern art. Um, it was mentioned, you mentioned there was a Titian reproduction on his parents' wall. In the apartment, which otherwise, mm. extraordinarily, was very mm. contemporary furnishing. Yes. Wiener Werkstatt, etc. And then Titian on the wall just there. Yes. And and I guess mm. we see that theme reappearing again in, in his work. Uh, it's interesting because I think part of that uh, might even be in the, the Greek story, because I, I know that Sigmund Freud... Uh, absolutely thought that the Greeks uh, invented psychoanalysts. They invented these stories of uh, passion and treachery and et cetera, which he he always referred to in his work. So, so that might have come in. And I also think the drawing that Lucian did of himself as Actian, it was possibly uh, to do with circumstances. He, he was referring to Actian to do with what was maybe an emotional situation in his life, I, I would guess that but, would be. Which is fascinating because he's using mm. uh, classical art, going to Titian and classical art mm. as a form to express his own um, creativity and his own personal situation. Yes. Personal situation at the time. And perhaps mm. as, as you highlighted, the kind of more northern re 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 reference to northern art, it, mm. it does shine through we we go to the next uh, few slides they it, mm. it just the parallels are striking in both techniques and and ways of presenting uh sitters and reality yes very much so and uh i think i think they were they were very much what was in his mind and what was in his education and the these early ones i think they're done on copper most of them and this this lady the first lady um is Norma Wishart, who was, he always said, his first girlfriend. And she was an older than him and someone he, he painted very much. And definitely with this way of painting, uh, just sort of cut at the shoulders with a foreground, uh, was definitely influenced from. And very fine, also very fine brushwork. The, using sable brushes. Sable brushes. Absolutely. Very minute. Mm -hmm flower and has the elements that we find in Van Eyck and Cranach and, and really the the leading artists of the northern art of uh, 15th century. Yes, and the surfaces are quite flat. He's not he's not as yet carving them or sculpting them. The, the, the surface of the face and the background and the blue foreground are, are quite flat spaces still. The, yes. And that's very much, very much uh, his style of 
or the I guess way into early fifties. The the girl was a kitten. I mean, I mean, again, looking at yes. the detail here. The girl with the kitten. He's the same format that the, he has something in the foreground and the 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 figure slightly behind. The the picture that you put that next to. He he really did love that picture, and it it is the most extraordinary painting. You can you can read it, uh, or you can just interpret it as a painting. But the 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 story that's going on and the reflection in the mirror is um yes, it was very powerful and powerful to him. And the the green the green of her was um he thought very daring to to use like that this, would he go and see a lot at it a lot at the national I would he imagine. would go he would go and see it at the national certainly later in in his life he he rejected a bit the early influences and um he he uh, wanted to be to embrace mediterranean art more and but but suddenly it was something very much in his mind but i think mm -hmm. sophie what you are you 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 are hinting at or what mm. would be a fascinating theme of the talk and mm. and obviously looking at Freud's uh, work life is that transition from early northern influence mm. smaller scale finely painted minute detail and uh, and some of the themes and the way of presenting sitters mm. and sort of beginning of the transformation that we see on in in Francis Bacon's portraits and obviously uh, that's that's I guess where we start looking at those two well i think um this this early uh, this the first portrait here of francis bacon uh is done on copper and it's very small and it sadly was stolen in in um 80 i think 87 lucian had a big show his first very big show and his first big show to go abroad and that in berlin where he never really wanted to go his his paintings it was taken off the wall and it's never been retrieved ever since um and that was very sad for him. Um, but Bacon had an enormous effect on Lucien's life. He he met him, he was quite young, Bacon was older. Bacon had this way, this lifestyle, this way of painting, this this approach where it really had to do with the language of the paint and the you know being very instinctive and uh just trying to see contours and eye sockets and things receding and um he, Lucien would talk about how Bacon was obsessed by a Rembrandt painting that, um, where it was no features, just sort of sockets and uh, contours. And Lucien used to say that Bacon actually tried to turn himself into that painting somewhat. But Bacon, Bacon's whole lifestyle had a huge effect on Lucien. And it, this ended sadly, this relationship. In the end, it ended bitterly. But at this time, he, he had an enormous effect on him. And changed the way he painted he he then from having been painting sitting down he then was painting standing up and then he's then started to use the paint as a kind of language a completely different kind of language and i i think it's um interesting really that he never he never painted he started painting nudes properly in his 40s which is already quite late into a into a painter's career Mm -hmm. and, and I guess a few other things they change the mm -hmm. the the scale of work yes grows larger and larger again away from smaller copper paintings of the influenced by Nordics but mm -hmm. uh and and I think what is juxtaposition of those two Freud uh Francis Bacon portraits obviously less of a drawing in that way of working through the canvas on there on on that right more more recent one of the mm -hmm. 56 57. What would you say about the changes in his technique? I mean, how... um, well, he's using different brushes and he's he's really thinking about the flesh. He's thinking about, he begins to start to think about the flesh, the blood under the flesh. Um, and the early ones, it's not clear by looking at them that they're made of flesh, but the late, after this point, they are very much, uh, much more physical and, um, he he is seeing it in a different way. Uh, blood running underneath you, and uh, it's it's a whole different way of of seeing things. There's still the obsessive way of hair and eyelashes, but 
it's moved somewhere else. Mm. And and the nude becomes a more almost sort of primary source of form of, yes. of, of, of expression. Yes. The nude it starts to be more and more about the nude. Mm. And 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 I I I guess also what is interesting to bring Greg out now is mm. his his method remains indoors, focusing on situations he controls as a painter rather than the light of the sky and sunshine and the rain. So and that that remains a theme through throughout his work, does it? Yes, I mean I think I think it it's very interesting that theme because because although he wants to really quite shed that sort of uh the northern uh sort of domination on him he 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 wasn't at all a flexible painter and he in in a way in a way the interiors that he painted still remained quite flemish and i always thought it was interesting that he spent uh some very young years with john craxton on the island the greek island of poros um which was uh he he was very young and before, um, after he left Cedric Morris's uh, school in Norfolk, it was really his sort of time of independence painting. But it's very telling that, to to our knowledge, there is no painting of the sea, the sky, the very obvious things that you would want to paint on a Greek island. And he wasn't he wasn't a painter with the flexibility, say, of Turner tied to a sail or. Um, even Hockney, who couldn't really paint anywhere, I, I think even even for Lucien later when he painted the Queen, it was, it was very very difficult for him to be. However much they turned the stable into his studio, it, it was an uncomfortable situation for him. And it, I think in the studio, he he created a kind of slight stage setting, and he also felt uh, in control of. Or. or or as much as he could be in control of of the space, managing the space. Well, that's fascinating, yeah. and I guess this is a good moment to maybe bring the Bato, uh, Arte Bato painting for many reasons you've earlier mentioned. Yes. Okay. Well, the Watto. Um, well, this was a very interesting time. This was the early eighties, and um, this was by far the biggest thing Lucien had done to date, and I think maybe the biggest thing with in terms of scale in scale uh the scale of the canvas and he'd never um i mean except for the very early things he hadn't done a group painting and a group painting was 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 very difficult thing for him to do because he really he was really kind of quite wanted to avoid a story on the whole and even with this one he he was uncomfortable about bella playing a guitar he felt being an unmusical person that was slightly an uneasy thing to do but but when he started this painting in this time, Lucien got into terrible debt, and he he went to the country to Dalesford to request Tyson commission him to do a portrait of him. And uh, then in the way that Lucien does, um, when he starts painting someone, he he really gets obsessed by every aspect of their life. And part of that was that this water was in Tyson's collection. Um, and I think seeing it there at Dalesford, he 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 decided to do this, alternating it in the days when he was painting Tyson's portrait. And it's also quite interesting as Tyson was about to remarry uh, uh, Carmen, his his last wife, Spanish wife, and his collection was it was still arguing that it was going to end up in Madrid. Uh, opposite his great heroes, uh, Velasquez, Titian, and uh, a museum that he considered the greatest. Yes, right. and um, the water, the water was the only one where he did preparatory drawings. He never normally did that, and I think it was because it was only in the drawings that he had all, all four, all the sitters together. The the girl on the floor. There was an uh, originally there was a different girl on the floor, uh, a granddaughter. Um, and then there was, I don't know, an argument or something, family one. And this this girl who was a friend of his son's daughter came in came in late. Yes. Mm. And I guess still we even it's refers to but uh, mm. we still are faced with elements which go back to the early, early Dutch sort of <coughs> influences of 
the, mm. the window and the landscape out of the window being sort of those London houses. And, and you like <laughs> talking about highlighting how sink always makes its way in. <coughs> the sink makes its way in and also this tap is running. And um, that's always made me uneasy because it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's slightly distracting that the tap is running um, and slightly nervous making that it might flood the room at any point soon. And, and but I guess we still <laughs> see that controlled setting of, even though it's a group painting, unlike Vato, it's which is plein air. Mm. This is this is the interior of I guess uh, Padding, uh, Paddington Studios. It's, it's Notting Hill Gate. It's, it's Holland Park. A, oh, it's um, Holland Park. But Lucian was quite new in Holland Park. It's a relatively new studio to him, and it it is very much a stage setting. Interesting. Yeah. And, and I guess those sort of setups, the way he approached, I mean, looking at a uh, triple portrait with two dogs and, and kind of mm. how you, we could relate and maybe perhaps you can elaborate to Titian, again, the, the one at the mm. National. Well, at this time, this was in Edinburgh, this painting, and uh, Lucien went, he he had a friend in Scotland and he he ended up seeing it and he was hugely, hugely affected by it. And he went all the time to see it. and. Um, he actually adored the way the physicalness of the Titian paintings and how they were always animals and animals on the ground. And there is a direct thing that behind, this is Susanna, behind her her back is, is a, a striped pillow, which sort of holds her into the painting, which is directly taken from the, uh, the slave behind Diana, who's- The dress, the, the dress, striped dress. Which, yeah. is, which is stripes. And Titian was never someone, never far from his mind. He was someone he thought of all the time. And he he loved very much the animals in them. And he felt that the more you looked at them, the more animals you saw. Yes. And I guess both paintings sort of grow from the right side to the left through that 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 point of uh, the striped dress or the, yes. or the pillow. And I guess the in Titian, the, the, the the cloth, the red cloth, would make an appearance through. Would it be fair to compare with um, other, other the linen towels he was using that appear in in various Freud's uh, portraits, including the one of you standing? Yes, I mean, I think I think to him, with this feeling that he he needed to be in this uh, contained area, I think that the the cloths became a landscape to him and. Uh, he very much saw them as a landscape. Fascinating. Mm. May, may I just, may I, Dimitri, may I just make one comment here? Um, so looking at this painting the other day with my husband, we both noticed that actually the other thing which he uses over and over again are, are the legs, you know, the dog's legs mirror the legs of Diana's attendants, the nymphs, which yes, is really yes. strange. Um, such a Such a crazy sort of idea somehow. But very much, yeah. very much there with mm, like yeah. at least at least sort of three pairs of legs just on the on the in the in the right corner alone. Mm. I mean that's exactly. very much so. Yes, yeah. it's like a yeah. web of legs and similar to the mm. dogs. Yes, and he did he did always say that one day he was going to do. Uh, I think he used to say in the year two thousand, I'm going to do a picture of with many nudes like bathers, um, but he never did actually. Mm -hmm. Most of his work, mm -hmm. interesting, you earlier observed mm -hmm. that a lot of his work is very much focused on lo long engagement and looking at one sitter. Mm -hmm. I yes. would imagine a lot famously portraits would take enormous amount of time. Yes. But when things mm -hmm. became with multiple figures, the, mm -hmm. the, the examples are not as, as, as common. Um, no, no. And they're actually much more awkward. I don't think that, I think, I think, again, it was quite difficult for him and his, his, the, the the sort of temperament and intensity he had possibly really worked best at one to one. I think, I mean, there's one the the ones he did with two people in, and I think maybe he thought they they were already two against him, or it was a different kind of intensity in the room and a different drama. Yeah. And, but we, and we have this wonderful example of a, a, a two people on the bed yes. referring to Colbert. Um, um, 
was it conscious? In your, was was Freud aware? Of, well, he was probably Absolutely, aware of that. it's a tribute, and and it's a tribute to Kobe. And Kobe Kobe was one of his great great heroes. Um, really, after Titian, a great hero, and he 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 adored the kind of instinctiveness and the wildness and um, the great painting. And this this is a direct. Um, I mean, even to the point that one of them has dark straight hair and one of them has fairer wavier hair but um it's it's i feel it's quite an awkward painting i feel it's not sort of wildly kind of sexy like the kobe it's more um bony and uh maybe more awkward and and less comfortable and but the reference is still the there. reference is absolutely 100 percent there I mean, another one, I guess we have the Dagger, which goes to the same well, again. Dagger, he was uh, was another great hero of Lucian's. And and these these ones, this comes from a book that Lucian actually gave me, which which um, the the nudes in interiors were hugely uh, influential to him. Yes. Mm. And I guess going into... Cezanne and after Cezanne. I mean, that's that, that that's mm. a later painting, but uh... yes, it's quite a bit later. And uh, by by this point, Lucian, uh, the early ones, Lucian really was was not at all well off. Um, and and if he was, he was a bit reckless. By this point, he he was doing quite well, and he'd acquired this small Cezanne, which uh, was sort of very much he ha he was not something new to him to do to acquire this painting and um he, he of course loved it very much and he did he did this version of it that um yes he he talked about Suzanne very often he he thought he he'd really created the way for Matisse and Picasso and he loved the fact that Picasso bought Mont Saint Victoire the actual mountain and was buried mm. there that that meant a lot to him and uh I think he even had visions of doing things like that <laughs> yeah Amazing. Um, and, and I guess we're coming to I mean another name we absolutely must talk about is Chardin yes well this this one Chardin was uh, someone he he another huge hero and he he would always say his nudes were the nudes Chardin would have done if he painted nudes which he he said he was too correct to paint nudes but I'm doing the nudes he would have done if he painted nudes and he um, when when he did this again, it was a new a new sort of thing for him to do. He'd acquired a, a key to go to the National Gallery at night. He would work there in the night. He was very excited by being there at the night and very excited to have this um, time with this painting. He always said about this painting that the the girl's ear was the best painted ear probably in the world and most definitely in the whole of the National Gallery. Um, and yes, he worked there for quite a long time. He did the painting. On site, so that was on fully site, done on yes. site. Yes, and the etching was done on site too. How interesting. Yeah, at night. I mm. think there is a bit, if I may share the observation, the, the Freud's sort of had, has a lot of night night light to sort of the more obviously artificial yes. light. But, and Chardin's one has a kind of more of diffused daylight. But uh, and, and I guess Freud's kind of, place with the scale a bit as well yeah. yes he does and especially the etching which is really quite large it's um the the volume of the baby's head is really quite large it's fascinating he was mm. able to do it um mm. on, on side another interesting one is turner mm. uh yes well, i guess that yeah this this the turn um in the in the 80s um i I suppose it was about 86 there was something that used to be done very very good called the artist's way which an artist was invited to select paintings in the National Gallery, the ones that influenced them the most. And um, Lucien decided he wanted to do the catalogue cover. And he uh, this was the beginning of him going to the National at night. He he adored um, in in the in the bottom corner of this right hand corner of this of the Turner one of the incredible, beautiful Turner. They were these fish on the ground and he was drawing, he was doing a kind of with chalk and charcoal. He was, he, he made the cover for this book. 
he was also at the same time uh, painting the picture of Celia painting Angus, which was humorous. He thought it was humorous, uh, the nude man and the dressed woman. But I I think strongly when he painted the paint tubes under Celia's feet, he he um he was really these fish in the foreground of the tunnel were very very much in his mind, and he is almost painting them as if they were the fish. I think it's a fascinating mm. insight because in terms of the angle of the foot and the mm. and the toe and the relationship to the tube, it does very much echo what, what the shape of the fish. In, yes, it in does. Turner. And mm. uh, I know there are various interpretations of what, what squeezing that paint by, 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 by the food means, but in, in many ways he was drawing on the form from, from Turner. Yes, he was. And they, they were done really at a very similar time. And I, again, I think Lucien had their kind of fantasy about being this kind of landscape painter and, and with foregrounds. Um, so, yes. It's interesting. Mm. I, I think... I think it, the idea that he brought the landscapes indoor, yes, and 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 the rugs became the landscape, and the the tubes and the floor became the landscapes. That's, Absolutely, they did, and he saw it like, and the nudes too. He saw them as and landscape. the nudes, of course, became mm. the landscape. Yes. yes. I think a big theme mm. is obviously the last Yes, you did well, mention Prado, the influence. Very much so. Sorry. But mm. I think it's mm. fascinating to see how almost directly mm. it reflects in his in his work of the time. Well, well, in the eighties, he 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 said that these dwarf paintings were amongst the greatest in the whole world, and he he worshipped them. And this this painting of Guy and Speck, which really is, I, I remember when it was first painted, it really is remarkable. Um, he Guy was someone new in his life. He was a bookmaker. And um, he was very, at this point, taken up with Guy. Um, that seemed to come to abrupt end at some point. Um, but he, when he did the painting of Guy, he was thinking of these dwarfs and he, the, the short neck, the angle of the head. He wanted to emphasize his smallness by um, the body small to the head. And he thought that the very beautiful Savaro suits on someone slightly, I think Lucien saw him as slightly, someone slightly roguish who'd done well. Maybe as a bookmaker, he'd done very well and suddenly, you know, had a bit of a grand lifestyle. And uh, the dog is painted with absolute love in the way that animals were by Lucien. And this is a great uh, dog portrait. Not dissimilar to Velasquez looking at dogs and painting dogs. Actually. Absolutely. He, he, Velasquez, Corbe, Titian, had often animals in, and uh, this was very powerful for him. Yes. Oh, interesting. And mm. and I guess we move to more ancient uh, influences, yet mm. with a bit of, again, carrying on theme of Velázquez influence in sort of in smaller in painting children in this one. Yes, I mean, I, I remember asking Lucien directly, you know, what what was the idea behind this painting, and he told me it was this sculpture in museum in Cairo that was a blind tailor to the pharaoh and the children were his legs really and his eyes and he he adored the sculpture um did he see it in person no he never saw it he never went to egypt i i don't think it came to england either but i'm not sure about that and i remember tutankhamun coming like a major star to london um but i don't remember that um and uh, it, interestingly you you mentioned earlier that it does combine this one, the angle of his own body, and, yes. and that, that goes back to that Velasquez reference you, you've just made on the um, the uh, sort of angl angling and 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 formatting the body in Guy and Speck mm. uh, painting as well. Yes, yes, and and he's he's actually made himself quite tall in there, taller. He wasn't he wasn't a tall man. Um, he's presumably got a mirror low down. The children are presumably done from a photograph. This is his two children. And um, it's also, I think he had in mind slightly, there was a very marvelous film by Charles Lawton, who he really admired, especially as Rembrandt. But he made this film called Night of the Hunter, which which was a relationship with a man and two children. And I think somewhere it was slightly in his mind as well as the Egyptian sculpture. Interesting. 
and uh, I mean maybe coming back to Titian and the and mm. positioning of the sitter and the uh, yes and the, I Sorry. Enjoying the drapery, enjoying mm. the setting as well. Yes, and, and he, I, I think Lucien, uh, uh, he, he adored with Titian and Corby, especially Titian, the, the, the sort of passion in things, like the, the, the feeling of hair on skin or hair on fur, and that everything has the same amount of love in the fur, the face, um, the intensity of the cloth uh, was very powerful for him. And yeah. I, I think we're, we're here to the, the, there's a series of power portraits at the at the show at the national yes and, and and i think it's a good chance opportunity to speak about the sources for those as well well again again he he loved that intuition um the the very powerful people of venice that titian painted but lucian used to refer to he wasn't Sergeant wasn't someone he thought about. I mean, he admired him, of course, but he wasn't one of his sort of passionate people he was passionate about, but he absolutely worshiped this portrait um, and uh, of Henry James. And he he felt it had, he, lo he loved Henry James as a writer. He adored him and he, he thought this portrait was very marvelous. And it was in his mind, he went to see it quite often. He went to the National Portrait Gallery. Again, he loved the one of the Bronte sisters by Bramwell Bronte. It was very important. How oh, interesting. And and obviously, again, going into the another big portrait in the at the National Show. Yes. Well, this the the this Tissot he he loved. I and mean, it's an amazing thing. And uh and uh he enjoyed doing that painting the red stripe. It was it's an amazing feat. It's a painting done by Lucian in his 80s. Um, it's also quite comical. And as well as being influenced by Tiso in the obvious ways here, it was also another big love of Lucian was Daumier. And I think um, he was very fascinated again by jaws and eye sockets. And I think this face has, he was, Daumier was still in his mind with the face and maybe the body a bit, um, yes. And he was a friend. I think he enjoyed doing that. Um, and and I guess coming back to northern influence, that that portrait, self portrait reflection, mm -hmm. and looking at Durer, I mean, that, the parallels are yes, very I, interesting. It's interesting because he is. I think he is. He's he's older here. He's he's uh, in his late seventies, I think, and he um, he is maybe thinking more of Flemish again, and he. He would talk about Dürer and his how he really invented the self-portrait um, because he was proud of his looks. And um, I, I, um, I think Nicholas mentioned about the paint behind him as a kind of signature. The paint was like that. I, he'd scrape his palette knife onto the walls, so it, it was like that. But I quite like the way he and um, the Dürer emerges out of the darkness, and he emerges out of the paint really uh it's yes it's um i think he he was looking at himself he was feeling more tired um at this point and maybe more needing for time alone uh so so self portraits was a way of not needing a model yes interesting mm -hmm. but and and I, and I guess it was not just painters but sculptors and i mean looking at Rodin and mm relating to this uh to 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 this standing uh by the rags portrait i guess you can yes give us personal perspective on this i well i will try um and rodan was was another of lucian's greatest heroes and he he really knew just about everything you could know about him and he was like balzac he was very very influenced by their lives and their lifestyles and the way they did things and he he had he did always have Rhoda somewhere around. Um, and he saw them every day and he talked about them a great deal. And this figure, I think he was thinking very much about the standing Positioning figure. of the arm as the well. The positioning of the arm. The angle. Yes, and the head leaning against the arm. Yes. Um, and the importance of the drapery as well. You were, well, the drapery again was, yeah. was 
a landscape to him or even a seascape, I think. I think this was his being Turner. That I, I think that he often saw the the nudes as Lucian would talk about animals a lot and he would I um he would he would sort of see see you not so much looking at pictures of animals but thinking of animals. And I, I think um he saw this a bit like a seascape with an animal or a sort of large animal um that on a sort of seashore, especially the later one lying by the rags. Um, but to him, it was a escape for sure. Mm. Yeah, seascape. Dimitri, I think we should begin to uh, wrap up so that we have enough time for questions. Um, okay. And I just, Absolutely. I wondered whether we might just show um, some of Sophie's works at the, at the end, because I think it's super interesting to see her works in the light of having spent so much time with Freud. Uh, so if okay. I just chose these ones, um, but would you like, is there anything you'd like to say about them? Well, okay, I will say the the, the one of the bed, I did that when I was modeling. I, that's done in 1986. I, I was I was working for Lucien every night when I did that painting. And it was really sort of about him in a way because it was, it wasn't the bed in his studio, but it was a similar bed. Um, and it was a similar room with uh, floorboards and, in Lucien's studio, they they was the sofa, the bed, and the bed. Uh, they always had, even when the room was absent, you were aware that they they a life had gone on. You know that this bed, someone had lain on it, someone had been painted on it. There'd been a whole sort of life to it, and in a way, although it was in my studio, I was painting the experience of seeing that and the thing that Lucien talked about, of it being a seascape, uh, was in my mind. Yeah. And the nude is maybe uh, just a nude. So it refers to Lucien because it's it's a nude. The yes. subject. The subject. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I and I did love this, which you, you told me is a portrait of Lucien. <laughs> is that right? Yes, it is a portrait of him. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I mean, he, he really did look quite like a bird and a, pred a bird of prey quite often. And and sometimes you could really see him as an animal, actually. Mm. Fascinating. Well, I mean, he, he uh, can I just pipe in? Um, he, he did have this way of working where he put enormous pressure on himself and he'd talk about being the jockey and the horse and he would really get quite violent with himself because of frustration and uh, concentration and uh, I often thought he looked quite like a creature. Yes. Well, that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you both so much.